Coach Guido coming out with the Tactics Talk. A tank review of the Tier 8 Polish Heavy Tank on the new Polish line. The 53TP Markowskiego. No, <laughs> I think it's called the Markov Skigo. Markov Skigo, which I looked up the definition of Markov Skigo and I was hoping it would be lion or tiger or death shark or something. But I think it just means Markov, which must be the name of the designer, potentially unknown. If you know what the answer is, put it down in the comments below. As usual with my reviews, we'll do an overview, talk about the tech tree, look at the 3D model, take a look at a comparison amongst its peers, take a look at my stats, how I did. I ground this thing from stock, so some interesting things are learned there. Look at my setup, and I'll give you about three examples of gameplay of the 53TP Markov Skigo. Let's get on with it. Here it is in my garage. You can see it looks a lot like uh, an IS-3, actually. So what it says up here is a proposed plan for a heavy tank that was to be developed in 1940 due to the outbreak of World War II. Development was discontinued at the blueprints stage. <laughs> kind of a forced discontinue, I would say. But interesting, actually, the, the shape of it. I don't know how much blueprints they actually had. If you look at the little picture up here, the turret is quite different, and the stock turret is very different from this. So this is more of a modernized turret that you get when you upgrade the tank. The stock one is much more angular and is a little more evocative of a earlier World War II tank. But this is all kind of fantasy tank land off of some blueprints, and that's what we got there. But as far as what you've got in the game here, you can see that it is roughly the shape of, say, and size of a 112 WZ. FCM is quite a bit larger. 5100 is roughly the same size as it, but taller. You'll notice that this is a fairly squat tank, not very high, not very tall. Similar shape and size to an object, potentially, just you're not going to have the pike nose, obviously, on the front. That's the wrong tank. It's a more a rounded nose. So while you've got some angle on the armor, it is quite rounded right there, and it's not a very high angle. We'll talk about that a bit as we go, but it's quite flat plated as well. And a, a relatively rounded turret, but from the side, quite a flat turret and easy to pin. Again, we'll talk about that. And then the big billboard side with no, no kind of uh, spaced armor. There's no skirts. It's just very kind of soft on the side right there. Things like a KV-4 or a KV-5 are going to be much larger than this thing. Let's move on to the tech tree and take a look at some considerations with that. As noted in my earlier reviews, the 7, the 6, the rest of them, it is a four-place tank and it is a heavy tank. So you switch to a heavy tank at tier 7 and you should be able to move your 45 TP guys up to here. As heavy tank crew, you just have to train them into the 53 TP and that is exactly what I did. When you get to the 53 TP, a couple interesting things here to note minus the crew we just talked about. You will need the tracks before you can put the turret on. You're going to start with the stock gun, which is going to be the tier 7 gun, which is quite a good gun at tier 7, with 192 pen, 225 with gold, and with a 320 alpha, which is nice at tier 7. At tier 8, it's actually a pretty decent stock gun as stock guns go. This is one of the better stock guns in the game. However, you are going to need to get the tracks, get the turret, get this gun before you can get the gun that really belongs on this tank which is the tier 9 gun 218 pen 245 with gold and a 420 alpha that's the big stick that makes this tank what it can be this gun this gun is the russian 122 millimeter d25 t this is a low effort gun by the developers what this gun is doing here as far as the grind goes or even on this tank i have absolutely no idea and it's a bit of a crime because this gun is in every way minus one way worse than the stock gun it's a 390 alpha that's the literally the only thing that is better than the stock gun and the this gun is not worth putting on this tank putting the 122 millimeter d25t on this tank is like making it a bad is6 that sees tier 10. atrocious Th this Probably of all the things in the Polish line, a couple things have irritated me. Of all the things in the Polish line, this ridiculous gun in the middle of the grind is dumb. It really is. And I think anyone would agree with me. I don't know how this got past the developers or the testers or anyone who thought that this would be a good idea. 
And here's the other part of the problem. You've got to go through the tracks, which was 20,000, let's see, 17,500. You've got to go to the turret, another 16,500. And then you've got to go through a useless gun that nobody would ever put on this tank for another 22,500 before you get to grind the 46,000 to make this tank something decent. Ridiculous. It's just absolutely ridiculous. My advice to you is if you've got enough free experience, do not do, not do anything but get to this main gun. Now, for us who had to grind through the whole thing, and I'll talk about this as we go, that is quite a grind to get to a gun that is worth something. And there should be incremental improvements when you're grinding this. The turret should add a little bit of something, and it does. It adds a few things. This gun should have been a little bit better than the stock gun. It's not. It's just worse. Nobody is going to put this gun on this tank. It's unbelievable, really. Just look at it. 192, 225 on the penetration. This one is 175, 217. The gold is worse. The regular pen is worse. The gold is worse. It's atrocious. This was a crime right here. So beware. That is there. If you're going to drive this thing and grind it from stock, you are going to have to go through some serious pain before you can get to the 122 WZ53. And that's all I got to say about that. Actually, I'll probably mention it a couple more times because I was highly irritated by it. Let's move on. The 3D model is actually interesting. This is Tank Inspector. Tanks.gg has one as well, but the turret is still messed up. It takes both sites a little while for their 3D modeling to get sorted out. But we can take a look at this, and if I'm using the same gun against it, the, the Marquis Kigo is 122 WZ53. You can see that the hole is not great at 172, 191. Nearly any tier 8 is going to go right through the hole. The only time you make it decent is if you start to put some angle on it, such as this, and that's quite a bit of angle coming out when you're poking out and you're exposing a huge amount of the side before this really gets to any kind of bouncy capability. The turret is decent straight on, as you can see. And this is showing 283, 271. Some of that has to do with the ang with the angles right there straight on. We'll take a look at what the turret is actually rated at. It's at about 210 of the thickness, never mind the angles, and we're looking at the angles here. But if you put any kind of angle on the turret, especially if you get around to this side, it starts becoming very easy to pin for your standard tier 8 kinds of guns that are all hanging out around 200 to 225 pin with standard ammunition, maybe a little bit lower on things like the T32 at what 192 or so, but with gold having no problem going through the turret. So it's one trick. The turret is decent straight on, but any kind of angle starts happening and now you got a problem. Plus you can see this big tumor on top it is virtually always going to be available to tier sevens, some tier sixes, and of course all the eights and never mind the nines and tens who are going to ignore nearly everything of the armor on this tank. You can see that side scraping, just a little bit of over angling immediately turns it into pretty much auto pin for anything at tier eight. This is a very difficult tank to work. The armor just isn't enough. It isn't enough for side scraping. It isn't quite good enough or set up for coming out at angles because you're exposing the big side right there. The only thing it really has going for it is it's got some decent sized tracks that will eat some heat and some HE. And then of course the big tumor with this is relatively easy to hit. We'll talk a little bit about the armor profile and the play of the tank in just a little bit. But right now, suffice it to say, after looking at the 3D model, that the armor is virtually useless on this tank. Minus sometimes, situationally, the turret and the very front of the turret. Let's dive into the comparison. Remember with my comparisons, I have stripped all of the equipment off the tanks. No paint, no consumables, top modules, 100% crew with no skills or perks. I have several of the peers in here off the tech tree. I also have a gold tank, the 252U, and the IS-6, which is preferential. We'll talk about why that's there in just a moment. Average damage is supposed to be this thing's trick. It does have high alpha, not quite as high as the 252, which is a bit of an outlier at tier eight, but better than the rest of them. The penetration is slightly low compared to other tech tree tanks. It has a 245 APCR as well. So not as bad as the T32, but not as good as say an IS-3 or Tiger II. So lots of alpha, slightly bad penetration. Rate of fire is okay, reloads at 12.18. That feels a lot like an IS-3, 
an IS-3 is slow reload for the its 390 alpha. Not as bad as a 252 at 14.38. Turret Traverse is, it wins for what that's worth. It's usable. The gun depression is minus 8. That's comfortable. It's not as nice as minus 10. Minus 10 really opens up most of the map in this game based on the way the maps are designed. Minus 8 is decent. At least when you drive up over a piece of rubble, your gun isn't going to lift up above the entire enemy tank and make you miss at that point. IS-3 is painful at minus 5, so more comfortable than an IS-3 by far. This is interesting right here. The aim time is 2.59. The dispersion is 0.36. 2.59 is relatively high, not as bad as, say, a 252U at 3.07. And the dispersion is kind of low or more or less in the middle. So the, the aim time and the dispersion sort of in the middle where you've got the fast aim time T32 with a slightly higher dispersion or you've got the 252 with a long aim time and a massive dispersion, but a little bit more alpha. So it lives in between all of those areas. 0.36 is where guns start to get kind of accurate, but there's still a bit of a potato. It's not as bad as the 252 with 44 or the IS6 with 4, sorry, 42 or the IS6 with 44. That's really painful. You've got to be very careful with those shots. But it's not nearly as good as, say, a Tiger 2 with 0.3. So you will be able to snapshot a little bit with this if you're careful with the gun. But in general, you're going to want to get kind of close to your work. It's not a great sniper. It is a competent sniper, but not a great one. Not like the Carnarvon or the T32 where you really get some accurate guns zooming in. Although, interestingly, the T32 shows 0.39. It feels like a more accurate gun, and that may have a lot to do with its faster aim time. Average damage per minute is at 2,000, and that is right in there, slightly towards the top. The outlier is the Carnarvon at 2,696, which is kind of outrageous, but he's running around with the 280 Alpha gun as well. And it is in the lead over the Object 252 at 1,836. So pretty good Alpha, fairly decent firing rate for that Alpha, and a pretty good DPM out of that. But... Here's the problem. It's sort of in the middle. It's kind of known for having a big stick. It can get the big stick, and we'll talk about the mobility into battle. But the problem is, its survivability is god-awful. 1,450 hit points is the lowest amongst this crowd. Granted, it's only 50, but it's the lowest. The whole armor is completely insufficient for the tank. If you are making a big stick tank that's supposed to drag its big stick up to the front and start smashing people, you've got to have some kind of usable whole armor, and this thing simply does not have usable whole armor. I already talked about it when we looked at the 3D modeling, but 110, it's going to be pinned by everything in sight, despite its angling, which is not very much, nor is it sufficient. Even with angling the tank physically, it doesn't do a very good job. 80 on the side is decent. That will help it with some side scraping. But you can tell that, as I showed you, it's easy to overangle and still get pinned in the, in the hole. The turret at 210 sounds like it's pretty good, but it's actually not very good at all. Especially if you put any kind of angle on the turret, it's easy to pin the turret. You dab number two, it's going to go through it. Nines and tens are going to have zero trouble with it. A nine and ten will have trouble with the T32 turret. It will have trouble with the Carnarvon turret. It will have trouble even sometimes with the IS-3 turret the 252U turret. See what I'm talking about here? The 110 is the only one that's in the same realm as the 53TP, and its turret is known for being penetrated pretty easily. So the armor falls down. The mobility, let's talk about that, allows it to get to the fight so that its armor can fail it. But it is the fastest of these tanks at 40 kilometers an hour. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't really feel the fastest, and it's not a whole lot more. Five kilometers an hour is not much more than a 252. But once you put the top engine on it, it is a fairly zippy, heavy tank. Is it fast enough to hang out with the mediums? Is this more of a heavium? Maybe, but it's not quite that agile, and that is not really how I played it. Traverse speed's pretty good. So as far as mobility and getting around the battlefield as a heavy at tier 8, it's actually pretty good. But again, I go back to the fact that you've got the big stick. You're going to feel like you want to influence the front line and get up and start hammering. But the armor lets it down and the mobility allows you to get into more trouble than you really want to. 
Concealment, who cares? It's roughly the same as everything else. View range is 370, which is abysmal, although it's not as bad as not say an IS-3 or the object or IS-6. So as far as the IS-6 goes, the reason I put that on there is when you go back to that D25T gun, if for some reason you want to go ahead and put that 175 pen 390 alpha gun on there, basically you've turned yourself into a bad IS-6. Whereas the IS-6 has 100 and 100 uh, millimeters, its angles are much better. And for whatever reason, it feels a lot like the IS-6's turret is better even than the 53 TP. It must be the angling, to be quite honest, or maybe the lack of the big tumor on top. There are hatches on the IS-6, but they're harder to hit. So basically, you've relegated yourself to a worse IS-6. I would completely recommend leaving the stock gun on that tank until you get the tier 9 gun so that you don't become a bad IS-6. What are you going to hang your hat on in this, this tank? Yes, 420 is great. It is a nice alpha to have. It can throw the rounds downrange pretty decently. It's got a good DPM provided you can stay alive long enough to start putting that DPM downrange. When we get to the examples, we'll take a look at the experience requirements. I never actually aced this tank despite having a 1510 base experience on it. So people are doing very well indeed, at least the people who currently own the tank and are playing it, which tend to be the early adopters, the good players, the people who have a lot of free XP sitting around. So that will, requirement will come down, but it also means that good players are really able to get a lot out of this tank. And a lot of it has to do with its mobility, its ability to get around the battlefield, its ability to clean up damage towards the end of the game, i.e. the speed to get to that damage so that you don't get left behind on raffle stomps and things, which is going to add to your average damage per game. And it's also going to speak a lot to people who don't play at stock, so we'll talk about my stats in just, just a minute. So you've got a tank that's relatively mobile, that isn't very survivable, especially in 357 with a big stick, which means if you're very careful with it and cagey and can keep yourself into the game, it can dish out a ton of damage. And that is evidenced by the amount of experience it takes to get a ace on this thing. However, I also find that you can very quickly disappear in this tank because its survivability is so low. All right, let's move on to my stats. How did I do in the tank? It took me 205 battles to unlock everything on this tank and to finally grind to the tier 9. And that is a lot. Several reasons. Number one, I started stock and I ground the whole thing. Number two, I did not have any until the very end experience reserves, although I was running premium. So with a premium account, running virtually no experience reserves and grinding at stock, it took me 205 battles. An interesting comparison is the two... AMX 65T, which I did, whatever, a couple of years ago when the French brought out their second heavy tank line, might even been more, more years ago than that, it took me about 63. Now, I've played this maybe two or three times since then, but around 60 battles to unlock the Tier 9 for the 65T, but I had a bunch of experience reserves. I had premium, just like the other one, and I did not have to unlock modules. I unlocked the top modules on that one with free experience, so that's quite the difference. 205 battles to 60 or so battles. I ran a 60% win rate in that thing with 975 average experience. And on this one, a 53% with 950 average experience. And it took me a long time to get above 50% as I ran this stock. Each new module I put on, things got a little bit better, but it wasn't until about 100, 120 battles until I had fully upgraded this thing that I was able to consistently play above 50% and I eventually drug it up to 53 or 53.17. The hits, that's quite high actually, 79%. So that does speak to some of the accuracy of the gun. It also speaks to the fact that I played this thing up front quite a bit and that may have been, especially as the stock tank, not quite the best idea because its survivability was just so low. For a long time, my average damage caused enemy vehicles was around 1500 and it was only in the last 50 or 60 battles that I really started to raise that thing up. And it finally got respectable at 1,805. For example, if you look at my T10, it's at 2,017 as just one example of, a, of another tier eight. Most of my tier eights are closer to 2,000 than they are to 1,800, so a little bit low. Damage received 1,237, that's pretty high as well. 
Destruction and, and damage ratio are relatively low also. And looking at the top game I had was only six kills and 2,265 maximum experience. Although I had several very good games in this experience wise, probably five or six, maybe more 1,400 base experience games, the one 15, 10 base experience games and multiple 12s and 11s. The problem is those were counterweighted by complete tomato games where I just got absolutely rolled up because the tank was unable to do a single thing. And that happened quite a bit as a stock tank. So it was a really a love-hate relationship with this tank. I thought as a stock tank it was actually pretty good as a stock tank, but it suffered greatly in 357 and probably a bit more in my over-aggression with it trying to bring the relatively big stick into the battle. But that's essentially how I did with it. A little bit low, I think. If I kept on playing, I think I could probably drag this up to 55 to 58% or so with some careful careful gameplay. But that would take a while. I've already put 205 into it, and I'm only sitting at 53. And I would say that my a little disappointed in my average experience being so low. But again, the stock grind really puts your, your stats into a bit of a tail chase if you're going to do that because it is a bit rough in the 357 with stock tanks. Let's take a look at my setup. I have moved the crew on as far as setup goes. I did have six cents. I think I finished six cents at, at tier eight. It might've been actually at tier seven. It was tier seven. So I had six cents from the beginning and I was working on my second crew skill during the whole time I was grinding the tier eight. Top modules eventually, but again, I had some stock games. I will show at least one stock game, I believe, when we get to the examples right there. I ran Vince, I ran a Rammer, and I ran the Vert Stab. I believe the tier 8 is the first time you can use a Vert Stab. I had a small kit, small kit, and a large fire extinguisher. I did not see a lot of problem getting lit on fire with this tank. Artillery tended to do it here and there, and the automatic fire extinguisher obviously will fix that right away, but you could run food, and that would certainly help with a bit of the derpiness of the gun. I also did not have Brothers in Arms on this crew, so food and Brothers in Arms, once you get that top gun, would probably improve the gun handling enough to make this a much more comfortable gun as far as that goes. But for me, the way mine was set up, it tended to be and remained relatively derpy through the entirety of the grind right there. Well, that is my setup. Like I said, I've already moved the crew on. Let's get some examples of this. For the first example, here's a bottom tier game with the stock configuration. You can actually see the stock turret, which is quite a bit different than the one I was showing you in the garage. It's got that flat plate on the front, not a very great turret. Its tumor happens to be centered and right on the top there as well. Fairly prominent. You'll see that the depression of the gun is actually pretty good. And as I am stock and bottom tier on Himmelsdorf, I am going to go ahead and come up top and see if I can't support what's going on up here. You got the LTTB T-34-2, we got a bat chat. There's a T-55A sitting here behind some rubble trying to hide and we've got more friends coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and get up here. And this is pretty indicative of the kind of gameplay that I had with this tank. Pop one in there and take a shot in the side. I like to get up there and try to use the big stick. Now this is not the 420 Alpha, but 320 is still pretty good for a stock gun. The Leopard just goes raging around, sees the opportunity. And now we support each other and we take that guy down. The bat chat has clipped. We knew that because he was over there fighting and he runs off, which is a good thing. And now we have them stuffed into the back corner. We've got an Emil, a T-55A, a Leopard. So it is time to press our advantage and attempt to get in here and take down the guys that they've got stacked up on the hill. So we'll come around here. I'll just take a shot on the way and then move around here to where I can be really annoying. Come up here and see if I can get a shot. Oh, no, that's just going to be a crit. Bat chat looks like he's down there. Thinking about coming back or running away. He's not sure what to do. Another track. Relatively fast reload with the low tier gun, actually. It's not bad at all. I see the 7 1 is fired, so I'll come around. There's a bounce off the turret, so it can do some bouncing. a shot into him and put him down and now I'm using these dead tanks as cover to move forward pushing our advantage and you'll see the mobility another example here I got up pretty fast up the hill relatively mobile for a heavy and I'm getting down the hill here pretty fast that's just a plain old miss there's that derpiness on the move I'm trying to avoid getting shot by this guy if I can 
put him down. And with the stock gun, you're going to have that fast reload. Now we've got a 100 who has stayed near cap, and it's going to be a bit of a problem. We're winning handily, but I don't want to rage in there and let him erase every hit point that I have. Get a little spotting damage on him. Artillery firing at him. I'm just waiting for him to do this, and I'm going to have a hard time even with gold pinning an angled lower plank of the E100. And he's basically looking at me saying, I'm going to come munch this guy. I'm wondering where the leopard went. Is he AFK or what's going on here? So I'm going to try to use him as a little bit of bait. I wish he would fight, but he's not there. And I've watched the bat chat and the T55 coming around behind him. So I'm just going to take this opportunity. Oh, leopard comes alive. Put a shot into the side, to the side and I light the E100 on fire, which is a very lucky, very lucky thing for me. A few more hit points in there. Puts his back of his turret to me and I'm able to take him down. So with a little help from my friends, we take care of business right there. And this is talking to the whole support idea. If you've got friends, the reload on the stock tank, the mobil even the mobility, even though I don't have the top engine, it's relatively mobile, is all pretty good. Medium range shots are going to be not too bad for this. I'm just going to go at the stir. Pretty sure I wasn't going to pin that, but I will have much more luck going around behind him. Go ahead and make that tracking shot. Come around behind him and see if we can't put this guy down. Let's ram him so he can't turn on me. Jam him up against a building. Get hit by artillery. Why not? And I'm just waiting for a reload, but I'm not sure I'm going to get that. Not enough to kill him. 322. That's that 320 Alpha stock gun, which is just not going to be enough. And I don't think I get another kill. Let's see if I can get to the stir. I'm pretty sure he dies before I get there. I make a good effort, though. Running, 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 trying to get there. Nope, and down he goes. So, 3,880 damage. Stock. Bottom tier. It does work. It's not terrible stock obviously you'd rather have it upgraded but with some careful gameplay you can actually get something out of this stock configuration which is a little bit unusual for the polish line because the majority of the stock configurations except for a couple examples this being one of them are absolutely miserable the problem with this one though is it's such a long grind before you get anything else usable and i'm talking to you d25t i don't know why you're in the i said i'd talk about it again right <laughs> let's move on to the second example That last game was a 1477 base experience, as you just saw. This one's a 1495 base experience, both class 1s. So remember I was mentioning how hard it is to get an ace tanker out of this tank. You can see I am now at fully upgraded. And we're here on hills, or mines. Actually, it's called hills in the replays, and it's called mines when you load into it. And we get down, hold down here, we lose the hill, and now it's just going to be a slow slog. Just a careful slow slog. Bottom tier, I've got a 268V4 thing up here I've got to watch out for. I get a lucky shot into the top of the T34, overmatch his turret and take him down, or maybe go into that hatch, not sure which. And I've got a T30 there. 268V4 buggers off, that is helpful, I did note that. I thought, well, that's a good thing. Now we can start working on these guys. Unfortunately, the dopey Centurion 7-1 drives out into the open, gets lit on fire, and is down to zero hit points and dies to the T-10, who shoots him dead. I have a Progetto up on the hill. I've got two guys stuffing me from getting the hill. I've got most of my team back on the cap. A couple guys trolling around down by the, well, I say back on the cap, back on our sniper spot. I have a couple of our guys trolling around over by the encounter cap. I sneak a shot into the T-30 and am able to do that without taking any return fire, but he comes in, hold down, sitting there staring at the corner, hoping that I will be dopey enough to come around that corner. 
And now I start to see him move, and I'm going to take advantage of that because when he starts to move, his dispersion is going to increase, and his turret is moving around. He's not locking his turret forward. So his dispersion is moving while he moves. He's going to have to swing his turret to hit me. I have a chance to sneak out there, take a shot, and get back before he can put an accurate shot on me. And now he's down to a one shot. So right now I'm waiting for my opportunity to come around there and take him down. I don't want to trade 750 hit points right now for that, so I'm going to look for a better opportunity, and that's a bummer. That is just too bad it didn't pin because that was the opportunity I was looking for. Later in the game, if we were winning by a lot, I would accept the 750 to kill him so I can move up onto the hill, but it's just too early, too many guns still left in the game, too many hit points on the enemy team, so there's no reason to give up. The 268 version 4 has gone over to the island over there and is attempting to push through. The good news is we've got a lot of TDs staring his way, so I'm not overly worried by him. And the T-30 is now backing up and off, and I'm going to look for that shot right into the side of the turret, take it, and now I'm backing up. I don't want to go driving up the hill right now because I don't know where the artillery is looking, and I'd like them to forget about me for a moment. Plus, I've got a T-10 up there, and I want him to also be a little bit worried about what I'm doing. Now we're taking a pretty good lead, and it's time to start working on things like this T-10, who is taking shots down lower. He doesn't really know I'm there yet. He will momentarily as soon as I come around. He sees me, and I'm able to put a shot, and unfortunately, it's just a tracking shot. Backing up as much as I can, and he is kept from coming around the corner by the standard B, which is very helpful, and there's a hit put on him, and now he's a two-shot to me. So I'm willing at this point now to accept a shot from him in order to get one in and bring him down to a one shot. And not only do am I able to get a shot on him, I'm able to bounce his. And the armor is occasionally useful. Unfortunately, now I've got a T-44 behind me, so I've got to get rid of him. And wow, unlucky, 378. I'm going to talk about that a little bit here because this gun, for some reason, and it's probably one of those things of perception or confirmation bias, but I really felt like this thing low rolled a lot. It, it really did. And it might be that a little bit of the psychology of, hey, I have this 420 alpha gun. I'm going to be throwing 400 around all the time. Well, based on RNG and plus or minus, it's not very far before you start th seeing 300 damage hits. So that 390 gun where you go, oh, wow, I got a 400, and you see that a bit. On a 420 gun, you sort of notice a lot when it's, when it's lower than the 400 and down the 300s. So like I said, maybe a perception problem right there. A nice hammer rack on that guy. Cooks him off. But it really felt like, at least, again, it might be perception, but it felt like the gun was continuously lowing, lowing roll. <laughs> Rolling low. I'm trying to figure out what to do with this T95. I wanted to drive off on him, but there was just, they were kind of making a comeback here, so I really didn't want to just YOLO in there and give them something that they didn't deserve. There's a 349. A 349. Don't you love it when things, your confirmation bias is confirmed by random facts? <laughs> Finally get that guy down. He actually ammo racks me, which drove me a little bit crazy right there. Can't quite fix it because I am not reloaded on my consumable, but I will be in about six seconds. T95 goes down. I don't have to worry about him anymore. That was about the point where I was thinking about diving on him. We've got the AX sitting over here, and that's going to be a nice shot for me. And no, not very well aimed. I did go into the side or into the track right there, so not really a surprise that I didn't kill him. But I get the spotting. Not the spotting, but the assist. And we've got a TD back here and an artillery. Always good to hunt and kill artillery, but I see the S S51, S1, Sturb S1. You can see a decent accuracy with the top gun right there. Not too bad actually. Zooms in fairly quickly. Not too derby. Bounce off of a sturve off the top of course with some angle. How come my sturve never seems to survive that many hits? I'm not really sure what's going on there. And he's going to give me the side right there and I can put it in and take him down so to speak. Six kills, 4,014 damage. 1,497 or 95 something like that. Base experience and only a class one. And only a class one, and that's bottom tier laying out the pain. So there's a pretty good example of the mobility working for me, being able to get up and over and onto the top of the hill, being able to fight. It actually has one of the fastest reverse speeds of a heavy, so pushing up a little bit, getting a shot, and getting away from things like that T10 when I was fighting on the corner right there. 
Occasionally, the armor working for you. I did bounce 880, so that turret, which I gave kind of a hard time earlier, is it's not something you're going to count on. I wouldn't go hold down and go, I'm, I am a T32 with an awesome turret. But, like anything in this game, hold down's better than nothing, and turrets tend to be better. And at least in this case, it held up to a couple shots that came at me right there. So, pretty good example of this tank with the big stick, the mobility, and as long as you can manage your your softness, manage your, your survivability weakness, you can have good games in this thing. And the 420 Alpha Gun is just plain old fun. All right, let's move on to the 1510 experience point that also was only a class one. For the third example, I'm only one tier down and it's only a two-tier two battle, so that's pretty good. We are here on Lakeville. I've got two artillery. I'm headed into town. We did not send anybody into the valley. and You can see that I dispensed with the preliminaries, but they drove guys straight into the backfield and they were all over us like stink on stuff pretty quickly, actually. Very interesting how fast the type and the 4202 found out that we had nobody there. But they're, they're going to get stuffed a bit by our TDs coming back and the IS-3 camping and some other things. So we'll take some preliminary shots in here with the T-10 and we're seeing them stack up quite a few tanks here. Our 4202 overextends a bit. He's in quite a bit of trouble and we can't quite support him here because we've got all of this mess going on. Get a shot into a T-30. Now I need to be careful here. I don't want to duel with a T-30 on this corner. He's going to have a, a much easier time wrecking me than I am wrecking him. And you'll note that I've got my nice Christmas camo on. I just wanted to notice, wanted you guys to notice that I ran Christmas camo on this tank for the whole time. <laughs> Interesting on this tank, on this map with the lighting, it looks a lot dark and shiny. Kind of a weird dark shininess, not really sure. It's not very Christmassy, is it? So I, I continue to duel. I've got my buddy pulling back there. He's uninterested in losing the last of his hit points. I thought about poking, but between a T30 or a 103 and a T30, I could lose all my hit points quickly, but T30 avails himself and has moved up, and that's fantastic. I'll take the chance to put a big hit on the T30 and avoid the 103, but now he knows I'm there, and it's unlikely I'm going to come around that corner and surprise him again. So now I'm backing up, and things are not going great. We're winning a little bit, but they if you notice the mini-map, they have really stacked up here in town, and we're slowly being whittled away. The T10 is a one-shot right there. I've saved my hit points. The IS-3 is hurt. T-34 is hurt, and the Progetto is sitting there, and now the 100.01 .01 finally gets into town. And this is going to be a bit of a difference maker because he's going to bring this armor and be able to start forcing our way in just a little bit. Unfortunately, I just ricocheted off my own buddy. That was a bad shot for me. I was trying to sneak one in, and as I started backing up, I actually hit my buddy. So I'm going to shift here, try to change these angles, and I make probably the worst decision right here in just a moment I'm gonna push in on these guys and they nearly take me out so the art armor is not gonna be able to handle two FV 4202s because they're gonna be, be able to shoot right into my hole I get a shot into him at 398 but now I'm eating shots from him I get artied and both of them are poking around and I am not able to DPM these guys and you can see how many hit points I lost I also got shot by a tiger that was back in the back Still stunned, and I pull out of there. Holy crap, Then now there's a T-34B. I snap a shot on him, and I'm able to put him down. 366, right? So that's that big stick. There's a guy who probably looked at me and went, I can probably take a hit from him, and I was able to take him down because I'm running a 420 Alpha gun. And that's one of the big things about the high Alpha guns. When you get guys that are close to one shots, obviously the more Alpha you have, the better. The 101 is able to hold this corner and he has kept a couple of their bigger tanks busy while we moved around and shifted and so now what was becoming a very bad situation is at least decent 103 is really a thorn in our side sitting back where he is try to put one into his top I hit him but I don't get that shot into him and now we've got guys filtering down and it's just me and the 100.01 so this is where I'm thinking well that's the end of this I'll just come in here and do the best a little bit of angle the armor actually works for me not bad Put a shot into the Tiger 2. I bounce the Tiger 2, but I do not bounce the second shot from the FV. And this is just a bad situation, so I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to swing around here, get a shot 
on the Tiger, get a shot into the Tiger right there, or the FV. And now I'm feeling like it's done, except I've got the Leopard coming. So let's see if we can bounce one, and very lucky, armor works out. Now the Tiger wants me. Here comes the Tiger. I'm thinking, man, this really has to be it, right? I can't, I mess up trying to back up. I don't know if you noticed, I got my back end stuck into it. Put some angle, I'm wiggling as best I can and survive yet another shot. I am gonna out reload him right here so I can get one more in. Looking to get into the front sprocket and track him so he can't push forward and kill me and the leopard is able to follow up on that and take him down. And look at the 100.01 who has sat there on that corner and taken everything that the T10 can give him and the 103 and then some. He comes around, I take him down and somehow through all of that, with a little help of the late arrival of the Leopard and the nice hold by the 100.01, we're able to come around here and own this. Zinging around, we've got the 100. Oh, the 103, I bounce. I'm thinking, well, clearly I'm going to die here. And the, the Leopard PTA gets the shot in before the 103 can hit me. Down to the bottom, and look at this. The artillery has showed up. Here comes the GW Tiger. Our artillery is going to go duel him. And I think maybe I can get one more shot in on this guy. Yes, I can. And I roll a 402, and that's that's too bad. It was going to be a very high roll to kill him. I don't even know if I can get quite that much. 400 hit points. Was it 500 hit points? Four, it would be 500 hit points, math in public. 500 hit points. But I do get another chunk out of that guy for 4,533 Leopard PTA cleans up my mess as he's been doing a couple times right there. And we end up winning this. This is a 1,510 experience game. Quite fun. But things to take note of here. It can get you into trouble because you can get forward before your friends do. The 4202 beat me. Obviously, a medium, he's going to be a little faster. I was more or less the second guy in the town right there. So be careful about overextending. Had I looked at that 4202 and went, yeah, buddy, let's push, and got up near that cow, the not the castle, but the church, I would also have been dead pretty quickly. Those other heavies would have come in and eat me alive. The mobility to move around the town is nice. So its ability to spin on its tracks, its ability to accelerate. This is this is the top configuration with the top engine, by the way. The top gun, top turret. Allowed me to move around in that city and survive a 1v2 for a while before I got some help. And move around to get create different angles and confuse the enemy and, and make myself more survivable. And then the armor, while I wouldn't rely on it with a little bit of wiggling and jiggling and trying to spoil shots, held up enough that I was able to survive an 870 blocked, as you can see right there. I was able to survive some bad situations. Obviously, throwing a dash of luck, that's how big games happen in there. But the question is always not that you got lucky, what did you do with it? In this case, we end up winning the game. So there's your three examples of the 53 TP. So what's my overall opinion of the 53 TP Markov Skiego? Markov Skigo? Markov Skigo, I believe is how it's said. I like this tank. I want to like it a lot more than I do. It is a high skill floor, high skill ceiling tank. People are absolutely doing well in this. Those people are good players. Why? It's got mobility. It's got a big stick. It's got a decent, pretty good DPM, but it is not very survivable. So your average to lower skill players are going to be very frustrated by this air quotes heavy tank that looks like it's got a pretty good arm armor capability and profile, but is just not as survivable as some of the other heavy tanks at tier eight. Add to that 357 and the way the game is played in general with hold down fighting, needing really good turrets and people not really using mobility very much anymore. Lots of camping and sitting behind buildings and bushes and whatnot. This is going to be quite a frustrating game or frustrating tank for your average to below average players. However, it is actually a pretty good tank and I would call it relatively balanced but unforgiving. So watch out for that. The only thing, the big knock for me against it was the grind was atrocious. And I'm going to take one more shot, one more swing at that D25T. If you are designing a sequential upgrade system of your tanks where something that you just spent hours grinding is supposed to add a little something to your tank, 
having a gun in the middle of the grind that actually goes backwards that far is atrocious. That gun is awful. It should not be there. You should patch it next week. It's miserable. And the problem is when you have new players grinding and they see that kind of thing, they lose heart. It irritates them and then you lose players, you lose customers. I don't I hope it's just an oversight and not some poke in the eye. I'm not a conspiracy guy, so I don't think it's that. I think it's more of an oversight. But if anyone would just look at the numbers on that thing, it's ridiculous. So there you go. There's my last swing. I like the tank. High skill floor, high skill ceiling. Play it carefully and you're going to like it. Play it like a crazy man and you're probably not going to like it very much. All right, guys. appreciate you tuning in. That is all I've got. Keep on sending in the replays for analysis or just good games, bad games, the whole nine yards, and we will see you.